Hello Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, books I'm reading, things I'm cooking up, funny things the kids say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes that you find some inspiration along the way. Today I have um, a couple of finished projects to share with you and a couple of works in progress I would like to share with you including one work in progress that I'm thinking about taking apart and using that yarn for a different project. So, um, and also I would like to share with you some tasty things that I have been cooking up in the kitchen lately. Um, so first finished project is the one that I am wearing. This is the Ripple Crop Top Worsted by Jessie May. And as you can tell, mine is not super cropped because I did lengthen the body. And then when I got to the sleeves, I was definitely playing some yarn chicken, but I won. This is what is remaining of my yarn. It's about four grams. The yarn I used is called Harvest Worsted by Earth Yarns. And this is an 100% extra fine super wash merino and worsted weight, 225 yards for 100 grams. This particular um, color is called cranberry and is naturally dyed from cranberries. Um, I had found this yarn at a local yarn shop on sale last summer and um, I hadn't heard of this yarn company and it being on sale and um, sounding pretty interesting. I thought I would give it a go. Um, they have this um, business practice of knit one, plant one. So they are in partner with Trees for the Future. So each skein of earth yarns plants a tree in Africa. So I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, this yarn I have not worked with before. I don't know what you would call um, the type of twist or ply it is, but it is, um, you can see this is from an end that I cut off after um, weaving the ends in. It is very loose, so it's not like a very tight twist, but it also makes it kind of fluffy and airy, which when I bought the yarn I thought it would be perfect for this pattern. Being a cropped and short sleeve sweater, I would probably be wearing it in warmer weather or layered, I guess, um, in cooler weather. Um, so it being a worsted weight, I wanted to find something that maybe wasn't as dense or heavy. Um, so this, I thought, would fit the bill. And it is, it does feel really light and it doesn't feel dense at all. Um, I thought it worked really well with this ribbing patterned sweater. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the pattern. I will pull it up here. Here. So the pattern was released in August of 2019 and I had been following the progress of it for a while and um, so when it was released I bought it then and I started it in August of 2019 and then when it got cooler here I just kind of put it in hibernation for like four or five months um, and so I had just maybe done it's a bottom up and I had maybe done like half of the body at that point before I put it into hibernation. Um, and then actually when I picked it back up again, it worked up really quickly. Um, maybe it's because I had also started knitting socks um, in August, end of August. And so going from like a size one needle or 2.25 millimeter needle um, to then coming back to a US six, which is a four millimeter needle and working with worsted weight yarn instead of sock weight yarn. Maybe that made it seem like it went a lot faster, but really it, um, it knit up a lot faster after I picked it up again than I remembered. The gauge is 15 stitches and 22 rows for four inches and three by three ribbing worked flat, blocked, and unstretched. I did not do a swatch for this. The ribbing gives it a lot of flexibility, so the fit I feel like doesn't have to be exactly right because it's going to stretch. Um, and the yardage is 275 to 1,121 yards. She has sizing from, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine sizes. The smallest size fits a 29 inch bust and the largest size is for a 61 inch. Um, it is very size inclusive as all of Jessie's 
patterns are and her patterns are written in a way that I feel like she's talking to you so it'll give you the instruction and then kind of have like a little paragraph or a few sentences saying heads up something or like here's a tip or make sure you have this part um, sectioned off or make sure you have a marker here to mark the front or whatever it is um, I just feel like it's written in a way that's very friendly even to beginners even if it is going to be a little more challenging of a knit because she talks you through it so nicely she also has video tutorials that she links to in the pattern that she has done to help you step by step with certain parts that might be a little bit trickier she gives ranges for her um, for the bust measurements in the sizing and then also tells you the actual measurement of the finished garment at the bust. Um, I made the second size up because I didn't want as much negative ease um, and I'm very very pleased with how it turned out. Um, she also tells you that if you're going to add extra length to the top allow X number of yards and she lists it out by every size as well um, for every inch that you add on which I thought was such a nice tip it's the first time I've seen that worked out in a pattern by the designer for somebody um, most people I've seen just say work it out yourself um, which I've done um, with a scale and weighing my yarn in between rounds and to try to figure out about how many grams I will need for each round um, or every few rounds but it's really nice to have that set aside um, in the pattern ahead of time because it might affect how you how much yarn you want to purchase maybe you're like in between sizes or in between skeins of yarn where you could buy one more but you're not sure this allows you to budget appropriately if you check out the hashtag ripple crop top worsted and I'll put it up here you will see all the different projects that people have made and it is incredible and so much fun to see this one project fit on so many different bodies and in so many different colors and variegated and speckled and solid yarns it's it's really fun so I highly recommend this pattern um, I think you could make it as short or as long as you want to um, I really like where it hits on me it hits like right above my hip so I would like to wear it with sleeveless dresses. Um, these pants hit me right about, uh, my belly button's here, so a little bit below my belly button. So I like how they fit with these pants, but I'd like to wear them with like um, elastic A-line skirts, I think would look really nice with it. The elastic waisted A-line skirts, um, as well as the short sleeve or sleeveless um, dresses for the summer. And I have some like wide leg cropped pants that also have elastic waist that I feel like would be really comfortable with these. So I am planning on wearing this a lot as the weather gets warmer. Um, maybe I'll even make another one. Um, but yes, I loved making it. And I think this neckline is really beautiful. And I like how um, the sleeves look as well. And this is a three needle bind off on here which gives it a really clean finish. So if you are thinking about this project, I would say give it a go. Pattern is worth every penny, every word on every page. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. So another project I have been working on is on the sewing machine. Um, I have made myself some drawstring project bags out of fabric I have and these wooden beads I had already and this ribbon I had so I thought I would make myself some boxed bottom project bags that were springy. The inside of this one is a very light lime green with mini white polka dots. There's this coral channel for the drawstring. I probably could have top stitched this down for like a neat finish. Not necessary but I could do it. Um, and then I included a little tab on the inside to hold stitch markers, progress keepers, and the like. But what's nice is that it can be folded over and used as kind of like a yarn bowl when you are actively working on your project and it sits up fine because I put interfacing in it. I will link to my blog post in the description box below which also links to the original pattern 
that I made it from and it is a free pattern so if you are interested in making your own I think that's a great place to start. Here is my second one. I decided to change up the color for the boxed bottom on this one. I um, found this like, uh, what would you call it, kind of khaki uh, heavyweight material in my fabric box. This side I got lined up really well. This side I did not. But it doesn't matter. It's still functional. It still works. And then I found this pretty fabric to go on top, this chartreuse and white floral fabric, and on the inside I lined it with a solid lavender. And then I had this little tiny bit of scrap mint floral fabric that I added a rectangular ring on, again for progress keepers. This time for my drawstring, I used this organic natural cotton ribbon that I have. I didn't want to use it on the first one because I wasn't sure how it would work out on the ends. I used like regular is it polyester ribbon for, for this one because then I can use a candle to seal off the ends from fraying but I can't do that with the cotton one and it's a little too narrow for me to sew on it I guess I can sew it by hand but um, my machine would just get all upset um, by trying to sew on such a narrow um, section so it actually works out because I double knot the end anyway before the bead and then I purposely frayed this one and I think it looks kind of fun it's kind of tassel-y so yes this is a really fun project I plan on making more of them I think my next one I'm gonna try extending this bottom color even higher maybe to here and see how that looks okay so the third finished project I'd like to share with you, I can't show you right now because my daughter is wearing them. Um, they are a pair of leg warmers that I modified from the High Desert Socks pattern. I'll put a picture of them finished up here, but basically I followed the pattern and then I went up a needle size for the leg after the cuff. And then instead of doing your heel and going onto a foot and a toe, I just finished off with ribbing again, but I finished the ribbing in the bigger size needle so that it flares out slightly. So that part goes by her ankle and then the other part goes higher up. Um, I made them in purple and coral yarns and the main color is, the, well, peachy coral color is a merino cashmere nylon blend that I used in my Pure Joy shawl. So it is super soft and she loves them. And I think it'll be a good transition into spring because my kids are pulling out their like shorts and capris even though like it's still 40 degrees outside. Um, but it is starting to warm up a little bit and it'll keep their legs nice and warm and it's bright and colorful and really fun. And sometimes the kids put them on their arms if they're wearing short sleeves or sleeveless just to like keep their arms warm. So I need to make another pair for the younger one. I haven't figured out what colors yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to have her pick them out or I'm just going to go for it. Um, but we shall see. That'll be a fun project. And it's a quick, it's a really, really quick knit. It, I feel like the heel flap gusset is the part that probably takes me the longest, um, or at least I need to focus on that part the most. And so when you omit that part and you basically just knit a tube, it goes very quickly. All right, on to works in progress. So speaking of projects for my kids, um, I'd like to share with you the Pure Joy Chalette that I'm making for my daughter. So I basically use the Pure Joy shawl pattern by Hohi Locatelli, but I'm modifying it to be smaller and I'm also making it in DK weight. Here is the progress on that. I am almost finished. My limiting reagent is my yarn, so I am just knitting it until my yarn runs out. This is how much I have left of the main color, so I am almost done. And this is how much I have left of the contrast color. So the wedge that I am on, I probably won't get to the number of increases that I would need with this color. So what I'm going to do is just finish this one up, see where I'm at, and then join in this one, and then just finish off with whatever is left with this. So I am super excited about this. Um, I don't really know how long it is because I have it on a sh uh, shorter cable than 
it extends to. So you might think, well, maybe just put on a longer cable so you can see how long it is. But honestly, I'm not going to because I'm just knitting until the yarn is out. So it wouldn't matter to me if it was whatever length. Um, it'll just be a surprise when I'm done. So very excited about that. The other work in progress I'd like to share with you. Um, I talked briefly about in my last episode um, that I had this speckly purple yarn and I had this idea of how I wanted to do this gradient of stripes and then with also with this color. So I started it and I am on the foot now and I absolutely love it. How fun is that? So I started with the contrast color and then I gradually changed the number of rounds each color is. And so my main color then, you could say, took over. I did an eye of partridge heel, which I think is really fun. And then the rest of it is just stock in it. I love how this color is coming out and all those little speckles. So if I make more of these, I think they're, um, I'm going to call them Field of Flowers. Um, and then like this one reminds me of crocuses in the spring. Like this color and this color remind me of crocuses. And I think I'm gonna do the toe yellow because crocuses have that yellow center and kind of orangey. Um, so I think that'll be a really fun addition and pop at the end. Um, and then I've been thinking like you could do like a lime green one for those hydrangeas or even periwinkle ones for some hydrangeas or um, periwinkle blue ones for delphiniums. Just so many different color combinations that remind me of different flowers that I really love. So I don't know. I think maybe I'll just start my own little collection field of flowers and do different colors that remind me of different flowers. We shall see but I am really enjoying this one. Um, more details are on my Ravelry page, and as usual, um, the link for that is below in the show notes. The next thing I would like to share with you is a project that I have not actually been working a lot on, and, and that I'm actually thinking about ripping back or frogging, taking it completely apart. So, it isn't that I don't love how the colors are coming together, because I really do, um, and there are lots of things about it that I enjoy, but I'm just not, I'm not sold on the reverse side of it. So this is the Glass Houses shawl. I've made a little progress since I last showed you. I love how this edging is. I think it's an I-cord edging. And I really like how these colors are peeking out. What I don't love, and I guess didn't realize, is that it's not really reversible. So because these sections are in the knit stitch and not garter, and there are slip stitches, but you also end up doing some purling on the other side, you do end up with floats. And although some people may not mind wearing floats out, I don't super mind it, but I feel like they would catch on stuff. So I'm kind of on the fence right now. Like I could keep going and see if I like it or not, but I don't want to waste my time on it if I'm not super sure on it. And I feel like most projects I either like really love and just keep going and finish it and wear it and just all of that, or I'm kind of like, eh, I'm not sure. And then it's probably better to just rip it out and use it for something else. So that's kind of where I'm sitting on it. Um, I love how the colors are playing together. I do like how it looks on this side, but I'm just not sold on the reverse side. So if you have any favorites that are mostly garter so that they can be reversible, um, not a lot of lace, because I am not a lace knitter, so occasional eyelets I can do, but not like, not like really into lace. Um, so if you know of any reversible shawl, two color, garter, I guess it would use approximately 800 or 850 yards. Um, comment below and let me know what your favorites are. Let's go on to food. 
So recently I made um, a very classic Taiwanese dessert called Dao Hui in Taiwanese. Um, in Mandarin, it's Tian Dou Hua. And in English, it would be like a sweet tofu custard. So I followed the recipe in this book, The Food of Taiwan. It is written by Kathy Erway. And what I really love about it is that in the book, there's beautiful photos, but it also talks about the history of Taiwan. It talks about the history of some of the foods that are considered Taiwanese. And um, it just explains the foods, I feel like, in a way that is relatable to me as a Taiwanese American. So I was able to find the ingredients for this recipe very easily. Um, it uses soy milk, water, unflavored gelatin, ginger, and sugar. And I don't have a picture of it, but it was delicious. So I made the ginger syrup, and then that got me to wanting to make more syrups. Oh, let me show you a picture of what it looks like since I don't have a picture to show you. And I love this dessert, or I could really eat it all day long. It is so good. So then I made some other syrups. Here is one of lemons. And I left the peels in for additional flavor, and you can eat the peels. And then I made a ginger lemon one. So the labels I made on the program called Canva, and then because I don't have a color printer, I printed it out in black and white and then colored it in myself. So even though they're in canning jars, I didn't actually can them, um, like with all the boiling and the of the jars and sealing them and all of that, because I figured we would use it up pretty quickly. Um, but So they do sit in the refrigerator, not out at room temperature. Um, so for making the syrups, most simple syrups are considered like a one-to-one -one ratio of water to sugar. Now, you can do more water and less sugar if you want. Your syrup just won't be as thick. Um, I will tell you what the Food Lovers Companion says about simple syrups. I had this, I've had this book since graduate school, um, and I love it. It's basically a dictionary of a bunch of different food related terminology. So sugar syrup is also called a simple syrup. Um, it's a solution of sugar and water that's cooked over low heat until clear then boiled for a minute or so. It can be made in various densities. I'm just kind of glazing over it, pun intended. People use them for soaking cakes, glazing baked goods, poaching or preserving fruit, adding to frostings. They can be used for candies and flavoring a variety of extracts, juices, liqueurs, etc. So the way I made mine is for the lemon one, I just juiced, I think like eight lemons maybe. And then however much volume that ended up, I might have added like a cup of sugar maybe. Maybe I ended up doing a cup of sugar to two cups of lemon juice. And then I had peeled off the yellow part of the peel, and I got some of the pith, the white part, and that's the bitter part, but um, I didn't really stress out about that. It's going to happen. You can use a paring knife or a vegetable peeler. And then after I boiled the lemon juice and the sugar together so that the sugar all dissolved, then I tossed in the lemon peels um, and then reduced it to a simmer and then just stirred and let it simmer until it got to a consistency that I wanted. So for whatever container I want to put it in, I just try to eyeball it until it gets to the volume that fits in the container that I want. So not exact science here. Um, if you end up with something that's more concentrated, you just won't need to add as much to whatever you are mixing it into. And if it's more um, less and then if it's less concentrated, then you might just need to add a little bit more to whatever you're adding it to. So I plan on using it for teas or you can get um, like unflavored bubbly, what do you call it, carbonated water or flavored carbonated water, whatever you want. Um, and then you can make like lemonade or you can put it in hot tea because um, it 
will act as a sweetener but also flavor. Um, you can make iced tea with it and because the sugar is already dissolved you don't have to worry about adding hot water to try to dissolve the sugar before you pour it into iced tea. So that's what I made recently and it smells so good. Um, we also made sugar cookies and those turned out really well. Um, I can link to the recipe I use below. And I also made my favorite um, caramelized cabbage risotto from Smitten Kitchen's um, cookbook. And let me grab that book for you real quick. Risotto is a favorite here. So I think that is it for my projects and food. I hope you find moments of peace and joy in your daily lives and I hope you find that time to, to just be. So take care and I hope you have a wonderful day.